made it to Monday. We are 19 days. Where has the summer gone? We are 19 days away from Alabama versus Miami at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, getting that college football season ready to kick off. But we're right here bringing you the number one show for all things Crimson Tide, that being in my own words with your truly Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Proud to have everybody, all of you, checking out the show on today. We're coming live from the magic city of Birmingham, streaming this to you on YouTube. Speaking of the channel, go ahead right now, drop that like on the show, give a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn all of those notifications on, hit that little bell so that way you can get all of your information on your favorite program, that being Alabama football. We also got you covered on Facebook and Twitter as well. No excuse whatsoever for you not to be locked in on the number one form for your Crimson Tide. Got a lot to get to, to talk about, unpack. Uh, we had a scrimmage over the weekend, Crimson Tide. First scrimmage of preseason camp. We're going to base the entire show off this to give you a recap of what happened, what went on, what took place, who did what, because at the end of the day, U.S. fans, you have questions, you have thoughts, you have concerns. It's what does this mean? What does that mean? Are we making too much of a big deal out of something? Are we not making enough of a big deal out of something? So definitely want to hear from you today as we break down the first scrimmage here from preseason camp. You can do this by calling 205-448-1358 to let your voice be heard on the show. Once again, that's 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. It's always a joy to have my man John Ivory in the production studio doing his thing. The Daily Super Chat Go, $75 daily Super Chat Go. And before the show even started, my man Jimmy Badman and Cash Clay to start started to get his thing on early, dropping in that seventy-five dollars early, and then right behind Jimmy Clay, McConaughey came in with seventy-five dollars to his own credit. So Jimmy Clay and McConaughey getting the super chat go done by themselves. Now, also, Alabama fans, if you want your picture featured on the show, this is what you do here. If you want that feature, you go. You send that photo to, T, to TD Alabama Team at gmail.com. That's TD Alabama Team at gmail.com. Send the photo right there, and that picture with your name will be live on the screen, live on the show here as you're making your 
call in. That's Nader's feature here too, in my own words. But we jump right into first topic of conversation on the evening. And that goes to quarterback Bryce Young, of uh, a sophomore from California. He just continues to uh, uh, be affirmed and show that he is the unquestioned starting quarterback here for the Crimson Tide. And, I mean, ever since the spring, uh, you know, Bryce has been on his game. He's been on his thug fizzle. He's been on his grizzly, on his grind about that business, you know, getting things done. I mean, all spring long, Coach Saban talked about the young man uh, – having full command of the offense, full command of the team, taking ownership of a team, being a vocal leader, being a huge voice, not just for the quarterback room, but for the entire team. And we saw his performance in the spring game, the, the 333 passing yards, the one touchdown to have him be the most valuable player of that event. And then since then, over the summer, he, had, he was able to work out with uh, Coach Taylor Kelly and the elite uh, quarterback group out there in California sharpening his skills back home. And then he comes back to the Crimson Tide and had a great summer in terms of the 7-on-7 seven -seven program. And thus far in fall camp, the young man has been a tremendous. And in the scrimmage, uh, Bryce Young, three touchdown passes. According to uh, close sources I've talked to uh, within the program, Two of his touchdown passes came in the scrimmage. The third one came in a two-minute drill situation. So the two that came in the scrimmage, he had a 10-yard touchdown to one JoJo Earl. And I'll get to the freshman wide receiver later on in the show because that guy is something special, Mr. Earl right there. And then uh, Bryce had a 13-yard scoring strike to Cameron Latou at tight end. And Latou is starting to become Young's favorite target. He really likes Latou down there in the red area. We saw in the spring game he had Latou for the 59-yard score. So big number 81, the former outside linebacker of whom has transitioned to tight end, uh, Bryce Young, really likes to target him, especially in the red zone. And then Bryce's third score went to uh, Trey Sanders in that two-minute drill situation. And Sanders, as we'll speak on him a little bit later on in the show, he's starting to really come alive here in fall camp as he's been that warrior working back from the injuries he suffered there in the car accident during the middle portion of the 2020 campaign. But, you know, Bryce is doing his thing. And uh, Saban mentioned – after the scrimmage that he was proud of Bryce. He said Bryce played well, performed well, executed the offense, ran the offense very well. He said the guys around Bryce, everybody around the sophomore needs to step their game up more. And that's on the offensive line. That's at the wide receiver position because, you know, Coach Saban, Bill O'Brien, they want to see Young have as many opportunities as possible to create big plays, create explosive plays, get those huge chunk yardage looks there on the field. And with everybody being on the same key, with everybody being on the same wavelength and on one accord, playing at that high level, then Bryce is going to be able to have more of those explosive plays but in terms of just his performance singling him out coach Saban said hey young men did a great job proud of his performance he continues to take those steps forward and kind of funny here I remember uh, of course Bama is, is of course the team is going back doing the Bama cuts uh, show that's getting back on Twitter here as the guys are you know, in the barbershop talking chopping up having conversations Alex Rodriguez former MLB, you know, star baseball there, he was featured in one of the Bama Cuts episodes, and he was in the barbershop talking with Bryce Young, Slade Bolden, Will Anderson, and John Mechie, you know, asking each guy, you know, who's your favorite football player? And when it got to Bryce Young, he said, well, my favorite guy is, is Aaron Rodgers. And uh, quite naturally, both guys from California, both guys have that cool, calm swagger, that cool, calm demeanor, uh, the confidence within themselves. Of course, Slay Bolden kind of joking around with Bryce saying, you know, Bryce may like, you know, Aaron Rodgers, but we kind of we kind of compare him to Russell Wilson. And <laughs> Bryce kind of laughed and chuckled a little bit. He was like, you know, Brian, he was like, no, Russ is good. Russell Wilson is good, but my favorite guy is Aaron Rodgers. So we're already seeing 
and all the confidence, you know, coming from Bryce. He knows who his guy is, who he likes to watch in the NFL, somebody much like him coming from California. But uh, just ever since the spring, uh, it's Nick Saban's fully behind Bryce as the, as the guy. And Saban's not one to really – deal out those compliments and deal them out in a big way. A lot of times when Alabama gets overly complimented, you see Nick Saban pull out the rat poison card. That's rat poison. You're, you're feeding this poison. You're making this drink poison. It's rat poison. But for the first time, you know, you, we, we are seeing Saban, whether it's spring, whether it's summer, whether it's now fall camp, he has stood behind Bryce. He has been highly complimentary uh, of young and uh, we're seeing why because of his performance on the field. And then you've got Bill O'Brien, who's been ex extremely complimentary of Young as well. And we are seeing the Alabama teammates doing the exact same thing of being behind their guy, backing their guy, standing behind their guy. So at this point, uh, Young, the unquestioned uh, quarterback, the unquestioned QB1, the unquestioned leader here in this quarterback room uh, where Alabama is concerned, had a very uh, strong first scrimmage for three touchdown passes there, showing you that he is in full command of this offense. But that leads, us, that leads us to our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting started. When we get back, we go on the phone lines to get your thoughts, your opinions, your questions, your thoughts, your concerns. We have a conversation with you, the Bama faithful, right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. I'm Alakai Moore, and you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. We're back in from the break, folks. Back into the action here on the number one form for Bama Football News. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Before we get into the phone lines, I'll take your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Ridge Gang. Just want to remind you guys, if you want to have your photo featured on the show, your picture featured on the show as you're calling in, then you send that picture, you send that photo to, to a TD Alabama team. That's TD Alabama team at gmail.com. TD Alabama team at gmail.com. We will have that photo along with your name on the screen featured on the show as you're calling in to uh, the venue here on this evening. Also, guys, shout out my man Bill from New York, Big Bill, who just became a part of the Blue Ranch Gang. So, everybody, welcome Bill in. Embrace him with open arms. Got a brand new member to the Blue Wrench Club. Blue Wrench Gang, my man Bill from NYC. Getting his Blue Wrench Gang on. So proud of Bill. Welcome to the family, my man. Glad to have you in here. But as always, folks, we get into the we get into the phone lines here to take your calls. 205-448-1358 for number to call in to let your voice be heard. 205-448-1358. We grab this call right here. You're live on the show. State your name and where you calling from. Hey, this is Corey calling from Trustville, Alabama. How are we doing, Corey from Trustville? What's going on, my man? I'm doing great. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the offensive line and how you thought they performed in the scrimmage because I, I saw where Evan Neal and Chris Owens was not in participation and then Kendall Randolph sprained his ankle. So just 
wanted to get your thoughts on the offensive line and how you thought, well, if there was any concern or anything, what your thoughts were on the offensive line? I, I, I wouldn't say there was any concern, Corey. I know that Evan Neal and Chris Owens did not uh, scrimmage over the weekend, on, and the reason for that being – Bama had a two-a-day practice on Friday. They practiced early that morning, and then, and then they practiced that night. And then to go into Sunday, Saturday, excuse me, in the heat of the day and have that scrimmage, you're going to have you know, a lot of those 300-pound guys not really you know, feeling it, not trying to push themselves you know, out there. So uh, those two guys, they're okay. Neil and Owens just didn't scrimmage. When, you, when it comes to Kendall Randolph, he had a minor uh, ankle sprain, but he was able to get up and walk off under his own power. He's okay. He's fine. Just a minor ankle sprain there. I think he'll be good to go against Miami to start week one here on September 4th. I think the offensive line as a whole, uh, the group's fine. I think from left to right, you're going to be still be looking at Evan Neal, left tackle, Javion Cohen, left guard, Chris Owen, center, right guard, Emil Echior, right tackle, Kendall Randolph, though J.C. Latham will get some time in there. But offensive line's good. Appreciate that call from Corey, from Corey out of Trustville starting us off here on the show. We take our next call here. You're live on the show. How you feeling? State your name and what you calling from today. Well, I don't know what my name is, Stephen, but I thought they called me the president of the uh, Blue Ridge Gang. I see Big Bill in here with the Blue Ridge. Well, we got a new member here on TDA. Welcome, Bill. I tell you what, Stephen. I tell you what. I tell you what. This is looking good. The Blue Ridge Gang is looking good. This is old Whalen here, the old, the old Blue Ridge guy. I guess we're going to call myself the Blue Ridge president. Sometimes he calls me the governor, Stephen does, but I don't want to go that far with it. But anyway, Stephen, tell me how you doing today. Give me some good words here today. I'm doing well, Wang, and I can't I can't complain here. I thought the scrimmage over the weekend was good. Saw a lot of positive things uh, from Bryce Young, from the entire quarterback room. Uh, uh, the defense is way ahead of the offense right now, which that's a good thing. I know some people may call that as a bad thing, but to me that's a good thing because for the first time since 2017, you know, Bama's got a defense back on the field again. Now, offensively, I still say that Bill O'Brien is going to have this group being creative, being fun, being explosive, but for a lot of a true, traditional, purist Alabama fans, you guys still want to see a pulse being shown and an, and a, and an elite pulse, as I should say, Say, being shown by the defense so good scrimmage over the weekend defense is back it's scary it's it's hitting it's flying it's head of the offense so I feel good about that all right that sounds good I don't think we've got anybody with any serious injuries so that's what I want to see I want to see that defense come back like we used to have it there with coach Brian and and, and uh uh, Brother Bill Oliver there, and also Gene Stallings. But all right, everybody's looking good. I'm going to cut out of here. Blue Ridge Gang, new members every day. I tell you what, all the cities, towns, countries, and states, CDA appreciates everyone over there. They love you. I do, too. But I always remember this. Now, roses are red, violence are blue. Stephen's the best podcast on YouTube. Jimmy, I'm working on your poem. I'll get it here maybe this week. Y'all be good. I love all of you. Bye-bye, everyone. Appreciate the call there coming from Wayland here to the show. Also, Bama fans, a huge commitment came today. Our own Justin Smith, the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA. Boots on the ground. That man doesn't stop. That man doesn't sleep. Bama has brought in a four-star defensive back, Jake Pope out of Beaufort, Georgia. Jake Pope has committed to the Crimson Tide. He's the 15th, 14th or 15th verbal commitment for the 2022 class. So big ups there to one Pope. Uh, Jake Pope coming in here for the Crimson Tide. You can check out the video coming from our own Justin Smith on the YouTube channel. The latest commitment coming in for the Crimson Tide. Gotta shout out my man Big Bill! Bill from New York with that $5 donation helping us out here on the show. Appreciate the love coming from Bill. The TDA in my own words right here. We're going to transition here to a quick topic before we take our break here. And that goes to the Crimson Tide the num being ranked number one in the AP Top 25 preseason poll. Crimson Tide ranked number one right there. Uh, Coach Saban going after national championship number eight in his coaching tenure, going after number seven in terms of the Crimson Tide. And despite all the pieces that were lost offensively to the NFL and losing Steve Sarkeesian to Texas, when I look at this Alabama team, 
defense ready to take folks' heads off offensively. I like what Bill O'Brien's doing. I like what he's doing. I like the philosophy. I like the method. I like the coaching. I like the teaching. But he's bringing to him those guys in the quarterback room, uh, uh, the guys at wide receiver, the guys on the offensive line. Everybody is feeling uh, Bill O'Brien and flowing with what he's trying to do out there on the field. So, Bama, uh, AP Top 25, number one in the country here as we are 19 days. We are Jaleel Billingsley. Days away from Crimson Tide versus Miami. If you ain't ready, you better get ready because it's about to go down in the next three weeks in Atlanta. But we head to a break right now, folks. Don't touch that down. When we get back, we get into some other offensive highlights not named Bryce Young that took place in the scrimmage. We talk about that after this. Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly. Test that Alabama magazine, don't touch that dial. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now, you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Rocking and rolling, folks. Rocking and rolling back in from the break here on the number one forum for Bama. Football news on a Monday. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Recapping the first scrimmage for the Crimson Tire over the weekend. Diving into some news and notes from that as Bama will be preparing for scrimmage number two coming up this weekend as we are 19, count them, 19 days away from Alabama, Miami taking place in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But after discussing one Bryce Young, we can now get into some of the other offensive highlights that took place over the weekend. First and foremost, uh, Paul Tyson. Paul Tyson had a good first scrimmage. I was told by close sources that he had, he had over 200 yards passing, looked in complete control of the offense, running the second team, looked in sync, had the biggest touchdown of the game. Tyson had a 66-yard bomb to Thayu Jones-Bell. Talk about young receivers step, stepping up. Thayu Jones-Bell caught that big bomb there from Paul Tyson and took it to the crib and – Along with that, Tyson converted uh, some third downs with the second-team offense. He also led a two-minute drill down to the two-yard line, took that offense down to the red area, and it was about to go in for the score to win the game. Uh, unfortunately, Tyson handed the ball off to one of the walk-on running backs, and the young man got smoked by Christian Story. Second-year uh, second DB, young brother, fumbled the football in the red area, so... Uh, Tyson's group was not able to win that scrimmage, but uh, had a good performance over 200 yards passing with that touchdown there to Thayu Jones-Bell. As we move in here now to Trey Sanders. Trey Sanders is balling. He had an outstanding scrimmage. He is back. He is the real deal. I mean, I was told by multiple people the speed's coming back. The burst is coming back. The agility is coming back. The change of direction is coming back. It's all coming back for Trey. He looked like the best back on the field. Brian Robinson did good. Absolutely. Played well. Rodell Williams, Jace McClellan, uh, Kamar Wheaton, they all had good moments. But I w people just kept telling me, Stephen, Trey, Trey, Trey Sanders, Trey, Trey. Oh, my gosh, he looks good. The burst, the speed, the agility, change of direction. It's all coming back. It's all looking good. Number six is out here taking them to school on 
the field and not just in terms of the running ability, but I was even told, Steven, he's showing shades of Najee Harris in the passing game. Soft hands, catching passes, running routes, making plays in the aerial attack game as well. So this is really good for Trey Sanders. And U.S. fans, you have stated that Trey being healthy, this could be the best back on Alabama's roster because he can do so many things. We all know how good he is. We all know how talented he is. We all know the five-star product from IMG Academy. The main question we've all we've all stated: Can he just give this this program one year, one year full health, one year no injuries, one year no medical setbacks, one year no unfortunate situations? And just looking back on this scrimmage and the information that was handed to me so proud of the warrior that Trey is I've mentioned this before Nick Saban has always been one to say what is your resolve when you face adversity do you pout do you say oh whoa it's me do you say oh I'm done or do you get or do you find your way to pick yourself back up and keep battling in there and Trey Sanders has picked himself back up he has continued to battle and man he looked great in that second scrimmage there. Uh, first scrimmage, excuse me, big ups there to, to, to Trey Sanders. As we move this now to the offensive line, Kendall Randolph, like I mentioned, had a slight ankle injury in the first scrimmage, did not finish. Uh, it's, it's a very, it was very minor, minor issue there. He was able to get up, walk off the field under his own power, very little assistance. This is a good thing because uh, this means he – he should be set to go week one against Miami, starting at that right tackle spot. Now, uh, Coach Saban mentioned that Randolph is key to this drill. He's very important in developing this offensive line because of his because of his experience. The young man, a sixth year, well, fifth year player, he came in that 2015, the 2017 uh, signing class there. So for Randolph, he's played in 26 career games, six starts. He's played. At offensive tackle, offensive guard, and at tight end. He's been worked at left tackle and right tackle uh, throughout the fall, so can play both spots, but is going to start or looking to be the starter there at that right tackle position. J.C. Latham has been getting reps behind Randolph. Also, keep your eyes on Pierce Quick, who has put on weight. He's now 6'5", 309 now. So, a big man, Pierce Quick is now. But Kendall Randolph, slide it there as the starter at right tackle just happy to see him be able to walk off the field on his own power the right ankle not a severe not a highly significant injury there and so as we now transition to the last offensive highlight here and it goes to these young receivers the pecking order at wide receiver for Alabama behind uh John Mechie, it is a fight. I mean, it is a fight. We do got guys like Jamison Williams pushing for playing time, pushing for starting time. Javon Baker pushing for starting time. Uh, Treshawn Holden trying to pop out there. Slade Bolden trying to hold it, trying to hold his own. It is a fight out there in terms of the pecking order. Now, this group, it's not like Judy, Rugg, Smith, Waddle, but still a very good group. Still a very strong, very solid group out here at wide receiver. But JoJo Earl had a great scrimmage. JoJo Earl stood out. I mean, had the touchdown reception from Bryce Young. Alabama looking at him to be at the starting kickoff returner in that competition. I would probably have him as a starting punt returner if you're just asking me, especially when you look at he's got that quick twitch ability that a Jalen Waddle had, Waddle now in the NFL. But JoJo Earl stood out. Ja'Cory Brooks stood out. And this is the freshman that not a lot of people talk about. People talk Asia Hall, people talk JoJo Earl, people talk Christian Leary. Very few people talk Ja'Cory Brooks. And when you look at his physical stature here at 6'2", a little bit close to that 200-pound range, he kind of reminds me of Amari Cooper a little bit. Just smooth, just real smooth as silk. Get in and out the breaks, in and out of the um, – in and out of the formations here. So, Ja'Cory Brooks is number seven. If you're watching the film here, Ja'Cory Brooks is number seven. You've got uh, JoJo Earl, who's number 10, coming in the, out of the break right there. Uh, so, you know, Ja'Cory Brooks had you know really good practice, really good uh, first scrimmage there. Uh, 
Thayu Jones Bell, as I mentioned before, Thayu Jones Bell, number 14. So Jones Bell was the receiver who had the 66 uh, yard touchdown from Paul Tyson. He had a really good scrimmage out there making the big explosive play. And then uh, you had guys like Treshawn Holden, number 11, who had a couple of big catches out there. Uh, once again, Javon Baker had a couple of big catches out there. Jamison Williams, a couple of big catches. Uh, John Mechie, a couple of catches. Slay Bolden, a couple of catches. Not really that one guy that just really stood out and made you go, oh, mama, look at that dude. But a solid group. A solid effort from the wide receiver room. Now, the one thing I want to see is the guys cleaning up drop passes because I was also told there were some drops out there. You know, John Mechie had two drop passes. You had other receivers that, that suffered with, with drops. So cleaning up the drops, having, you know, Bryce Young making sure that when he gets those guys the ball, they are catching it bringing it in, turning upfield. I understand there's no more Devontae Smith. So, you know, he was the guy that represented those sure hands in terms of that wide receiver room. But, you know, these guys, starting off with Mechie, got to catch the football, got to bring it in, got to help your quarterback out there. But in terms of just the young guys, uh, Holden made plays, JoJo Earl, number 10, made plays. He had an outstanding scrimmage. Thayu Jones-Bell made plays. He had the touchdown catch. Uh, guys like so Thayu Jones-Bell, JoJo Earl, and Ja'Cory Brooks had a couple of really nice snags there from Paul Tyson running with that second team unit. So those were just some of the offensive, other offensive highlights to put there behind one Bryce Young from the first game like practice over the weekend. But we take our next break here on the show. Don't touch that dial, folks. When we get back, we jump into the phone lines again to get your calls, your thoughts, your concerns, your opinions, interacting with you, the best fans in the business, Bama Nation. We're coming to you after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. What's up, Bama Nation? This is Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman. And you're listening to my guy, Stephen M. Smith, in my own words, brought to you by Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Roll! Roll! Look at all these great players in Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Man, wait till I turn up this year. I'm gonna be on the front cover. But what if Will goes off? Or Joe, DeMarco, Chris, Tim, Christian. Don't wait. Order now at touchdownalabama.com or call 833-483-2624 today. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw the foes up. But now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. As we are back into the action here, folks, from the break on a Monday, getting that work week started off for you correctly. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, touchdown, Alabama Magazine. We got a couple of super chats to get to, John. Get the horn ready. As we got the man, Waylon Coburn, the president of the Blue Ridge Gang Fan Club right there on Waylon with that $4.99 and the super chats. And then we got Willie, 351, turn it up on the seven gang, that 777. Coming in from Willie351, helping us out here on the show. We appreciate all the interaction in the chat right now. You guys are blowing the chat up. A lot of talk, a lot of chatter, a lot of conversation, a lot of engagement. We appreciate that. Love it, love it, love it. We go to the phone lines to take your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358, 205-448-1358. 1358. We grab a call right here. You're live on the show. State your name and where are you calling from today? Steven, what's up? Bill from New York. Want to My make man, a, a Big quick Bill point. in the building. What's going on, brother? 
wanted to make a quick point or two. You know, I saw a video today on YouTube talking about we're overrated, you know, and soon we're going to see articles come about, coming out like how good Miami is. And, you know, but I heard the same thing about Wisconsin, Virginia Tech, USC, and every other team we beat on opening day. See, the networks want to make it sound close. They want to make games sound close. And bookies want action on both sides. But we are the Crimson Tide. And between the title game and the opener, Coach Saban could prepare this team for a ground war with communist China. And we're going to kick their ass. And listen, you know, roll tide. And thanks once again for taking my call. Absolutely, my man Bill from New York starting us off here in the second call segment. But coming in hot, my man Bill from New York. Love that call right there. We take our next call of the evening. You're live on the show. What's going on? State your name and where are you calling from? Hey, Steven. This is Al from Colorado calling back. We got my Roll man tide. Al from Colorado. What's happening with you, Al? Well, I want to say I never get tired of hearing good news about the tide and the players. Can't wait for the season to start, but I thought you might like to hear a little bit of news about uh, Alex Leatherwood with my uh, Las Vegas Raiders. That's okay. 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 Yeah. What's going on with Alex? Yeah. Well, you know, we had our first game. We won pretty handily, but uh, I was watching Alex. You know, he was only there for a short while, but uh, it's already clear that what Coach Cable, the offensive line coach, is putting down, he is picking up. He was already looking good like he's got it. Well, I made a couple of slight, uh, slight mistakes on the pass protection, but, you know, in the NFL, that, that really takes some work. But he's already looking good and making people look silly for saying picking the Outland Trophy winner at number 18 was the wrong thing to do. So uh, everybody is really excited about him. And uh, so I'm, I think that, uh, you know, he is going to really represent the Crimson Tide well on that offensive line, helping open holes for Josh Jacobs and uh, uh, also for Kenyon Drake. Now, I don't know if uh, either Bo Scarborough or B.J. Emmons will make the team because that undrafted rookie from Louisiana, that raging Cajun, Trey Regis, just really showed out in that first game. He might wind up getting that uh, last uh, uh, running back job, but um, we'll see about that as the preseason goes on. But right now, Alex Leatherwood looks like he is is just going to be a great addition to you know Tuscaloosa West out there in uh, Las Vegas. Absolutely. Appreciate appreciate you, Al, there for that call. And, I mean, Alex Leatherwood has always been a highly intelligent young man, still is, you know, a guy that bleeds football, knows football, uh, cares about the game, uh, very, very high tech in terms of the offensive line, out and trophy winner for a reason, and definitely looking forward to seeing what he does in helping Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake have that success for the Raiders. But we go to our next call right here. You're live on the show. How you feeling uh, state your name and where you're calling from Chuck comes from the map we got Charles from the from D map in here Charles what's going on uh, nothing what's on your mind Charles uh, who won scrimmage who who won that's a good question Charles uh Defense won the scrimmage. Offense made some plays, but defense took the scrimmage. Yeah, Bryce Young played. Yeah, Bryce Young played. I mean, Bryce Young had you know, Bryce Young had three touchdowns, but that uh that first team that first team defense made it tough though. That first team defense didn't make it tough, but Bryce Bryce did his thing though. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the call that Charles from, uh, from the mob was there. Want to know who won the scrimmage. Bryce Young had three touchdowns. He went out there and performed, did his thing. But uh, defense, though, flying all over the field out there. With defense is back, people. This is going to be a marquee, scary, soul-crushing type of group. So it's it's back in here in Tuscaloosa. We're going to take – we're going to go to a topic right here. And uh, so this one – you got Alabama in the NFL in terms of preseason. We got a chance to see a lot of good games week one of the preseason in, in the NFL. And just some, some names that come to mind, some names on the, on the screen here that stepped up. Mac Jones had a good preseason for the Patriots. Had, had went 13 for 19, 87 yards in his first game. I guess the Washington football team looked in control of that offense. Big ups there too, Mac Jones. Tua Tonga-Vangoa, first preseason game for the Dolphins against the Chicago Bears. Two had some good moments there. Still, 
working on getting better, still making those improvements. But Tua had some good moments there. And then Patrick Sertan had the pick six over the weekend for the Broncos against the Vikings. He also had a pass breakup. Big ups there to Patrick Sertan. Uh, Jerry Judy had a couple of catches for the Broncos against the Vikings. Miller Forrestal, who was not drafted, undrafted free agent to the Titans, made the team and had a feel-good moment for the ages. He caught a touchdown pass from Matt Barkley in the Titans matchup against the Falcons. Preseason there, pre good, uh, big ups there to one Miller Forrestal. So you, 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 Bama had some guys. Bama had some guys week one in the preseason, stepped up, played well, performed well. Looking forward to seeing what all of these guys do as preseason keeps going, and especially in the regular season. Also, the NFL put out its top 100, uh, top 100 players for 2021. It went from 100 to 41. Four Alabama guys, or four former Bama guys were named. Ryan Kelly was number 69 on the list, uh, center for the Indianapolis Colts. Josh Jacobs was number 68 there, running back for the Raiders. Calvin Ridley was number 65, wide receiver for the Falcons. And the highest rated guy was Minka Fitzpatrick at number 52, safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Alabama even making it on to the top 100 players for 2021 for the NFL. But we take another break here, folks, on the show. Don't touch that down. When we get back, we're going to talk about this defense and how it owned the scrimmage from the line to the linebackers to the secondary. We break down the defense after this. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Marvin Constant, all SEC linebacker and 1999 SEC champion. You are listening to In My Own Words, brought to you by Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Roll Tide. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, people, we're back in, getting you locked and loaded here, or tidied up loose ends, as I should say, on the show, number one forum for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Thoroughly appreciate everybody calling in, texting in, chatting in, donating in, creating all of this great energy on a Monday as we are talking about the scrimmage that happened over the weekend, giving our thoughts on this as Bama prepares for the second scrimmage this weekend, 19 days away from Alabama versus Miami to open the season. But before we get into the defense right here, got to remind you of TDAWare.com. So that's TDAWare.com. So for all of you fans still overjoyed with the Crimson Tides National Championship, we want you to check out our championship collection merch. This means you grab you an 18 of them things, folk hoodie, t-shirt or sweatshirt as well as our got 18 we do shirts designs that feature all 18 championship years on the back you head on over to td tdaware.com do it right now that's tdaware.com you go over the championship connections merch tab and you get you that gear today showing that support for coach saban the university of alabama the student athletes and us here at touchdown alabama magazine but we now get into 
Crimson Tide defense from the first scrimmage. Defense went crazy. Defense went nuts. Defense on uh, the day. Offense made plays. Offense got, you know, some momentum, some, some movement going on. We were, we were able to move the ball here and there. But overall, the theme was defense was everywhere. So starting this thing off, with the defensive line, uh, Alabama's rotating 10, 9 to 10 deep at every spot. So it, it's three deep. Bama's three deep at defensive end, three deep at defensive tackle, three deep at the other defensive end position. So Bama's rotating guys. Bodies are fresh. Uh, you know, guys are able to go out there and make plays. Tim Smith was unblockable. Tim Smith was a menace. Tim Smith could not be stopped. I was told this guy – is the next Quinnen Williams. Like they, they could not hold him. They could not hold Tim Smith from getting to the quarterback. So defensive line scary. Defensive line on its on its post. Defensive line on its job. Uh, Freddie Roach is on one when you talk about this group right here. So that 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 unit three deep uh, across the board there. When you look at the Alabama linebacker room uh, and in particular the just Christian Harris. Henry Tooto, Will Anderson, and Christopher Allen. Those guys look like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I mean, they were tearing the field up at Brian Denny. Those four, in particular, Christian Harris had an amazing day. That was a madman. Uh, he is going to be a first-round pick. Uh, Christian Harris more than likely will win the Dick Butkus Award. Uh, that guy was flying all over the field. He and Henry Tooto mesh perfectly together. They work well together. I mean, they play off each other smoothly when you talk about middle linebacker and, and weak side linebacker. I mean, of course, you know, your two jack, your, your two outside guys, Chris Allen and Will Anderson, just teeing off on quarterbacks, running down ball carriers. I mean, th th those four guys are, are menace to society. And you've got depth behind those four, in particular – at the outside linebacker position, when you look at Drew Sanders, King Wakuda, Chris Braswell, Dallas Turner, a freshman. Keep your eyes on that cat. That dude's violent. Number 15, Dallas Turner. He, he will craft some type of role, you know, within this line, this outside linebacker rotation. But the, the linebacker room, uh, really, really good scrimmage in particular. Harris to Oto, Anderson, and Chris Allen. And then last but not least, uh, the defensive secondary, this is going to be where the most fun is had. Just so deep in that back five and, and trying to get all of your best players on the field in the nickel and in sub-nickel packages in dime and, the sub, and in the sub-dime packages. I, I've been one to say this. If I'm Pete Golding, I'm crafting multiple packages out of different sets because you got to get all – of your A1 athletes on the field and let those guys do damage. And just in terms of the young defensive backs, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Terion Arnold, Kyrie Jackson, Christian Story, they all made plays in the scrimmage. Kool-Aid McKinstry was cracking heads out there. Uh, Terion Arnold, if, if Kool-Aid is tied to Saban's hip, Terion Arnold has found himself in the bosom of Coach Saban because Saban loves himself some Terry on Arnold. He, he sat there and said, look, man, Terry on speed, athleticism, length, ball skills, IQ. Like Arnold's got it. Arnold's got it, got it. He's around, you know, 100, 190 pounds now. You no know, Kool-Aid number one here. Terry on Arnold number 12. Uh, Kyrie Jackson number six. Christian Story is number 11 by Arnold, you know, a guy that Saban's trying to create room to get him on the field. Kyrie Jacks, number six. A lot of people have been talking about him, the Juco, uh, originally from Maryland, played his Juco ball in Mississippi. He had about three to four hits in the scrimmage that made you go, that brother, oh, one, Jesus. He got a family, Kyrie, slow down. He got to take care of kids. Lord, Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie had some hits that you were like, some got to give. He was out there hitting. He was out there laying folks out. Like, Kyrie Jackson, <laughs> Saban, trying to create an opportunity out there for him on the field. And then Christian Story, the second-year player, he had the hit on the walk-on running back that caused the fumble at the end of the scrimmage. So, 
you're seeing these four young guys, McKinstry, Arnold, Jackson, Story, already doing some damage, already making some plays here in Saban, trying to get all of these guys, you know, infiltrated into this you know, defensive secondary. And then you know, on top of that, another interesting tidbit here, Brian Branch, and what's going to be interesting here, Brian Branch is getting some work as a uh, boundary corner. He's getting some work as an outside corner and the nickel and dime sub packages here. So keep your eyes on that. They're trying to get a refined role for Brian Branch. But as a whole, this defense fly to the ball. This defense is scary. This defense is way ahead of the offense. And like I mentioned, this is a good thing because the last three years, going back to 2018, the offense was ahead with Tua, with the receivers, with the offensive line, with Mac Jones, with Najee, Steve Sarkeesian. The offense was ahead of everything, and it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun watching the offense score points, sling the ball all over the field. It, it was awesome to see that. But for you, for us, the Alabama Nation out there, you always have been one for, but where is our defense, right? It's cool to have an offense. It's fun to have an offense. I'm not taking any, anything away from them. But where is our backbone? That's the defense. Where is the, the aspect of football that we hang our hat on as people that's the defensive side of the ball can we have that as well can that be going can that be full goal can that be in sync can we have a balance of having a fun offense but also having that defense that has that standard of hitting quarterbacks stuffing run games creating turnovers and just making life difficult for every offense that goes up against that type of of an Alabama defense. And I think this season, you're going to get back to seeing the best of both worlds. Having a fun offense with Bill O'Brien calling the plays, but also having the defense. Pete Golden is going to have this group right. Pete Golden is going to have this group right. He has no choice but to have this group right. And I think he is going to do that in the upcoming season. But this first scrimmage was a strong indication of you have a defense is bad. They, they were flying around like nobody's business. Taking. Uh, not killing folks and taking names. That's what the defense was doing out there on the field. But as always, Bama fans, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you right here. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, Google Play, Overcast.fm, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, got you covered there. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll be back on Wednesday continuing the conversation that is Tide Football. Remember, Bama fans, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. Also, if you want to have your picture featured on the show, when you call in, you send that photo to tdalabamateam at gmail.com. tdalabamateam at gmail.com. Send it right there. And your photo, along with your name, when you call in, will be featured on the show. Also, Bama fans, if you're trying to get that print edition, that fresh edition of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, you can do that by going to touchdownalabama.com and click join, become a member, a subscriber today. That link in the, in the description. And also, if you're looking to get your hands on that four-finger bling necklace, four-finger bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys that we own, thefourthquarter.com. That link in the description also. But until next time, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate value those husbands children continue doing the right thing fun thing smart thing legitimate thing to not be bored and for some of y'all school is back in so get that school work done also get you those three hearty meals a day those three great naps a day protect yourself protect the loved ones around you till next time folks i'm your man stephen m smith this has been in my own words